Hey everyone, it's Anthony Ramos from GLAAD. Matt, I'm gonna start with you. Um, you know, I'm curious, what were some of your own experiences with self-acceptance and coming out? You know, did you use in order to get into this character and to tell this story authentically? Absolutely. I mean, I can only speak for myself, but I would imagine that we all had a tremendous resource of personal experience to bring to each of our own characters. For mine, it was certainly, you know, Donald's level of personal acceptance and having to go through analysis to sort of figure out who he is and who he wants to be and his relationships with his family. All those things are obviously things that you draw on as an actor and then you use your imagination to fill in the blanks. Uh, Tuck, I'm going to hop over to you because your character obviously is, has some struggles with self-acceptance and, and who he is. For you, you know, same question, you know, what were some of your own experiences with self-acceptance, with coming out? Did you, you know, go into in order to kind of tell, you know, this story with Hank? You know, that's, that's a great question. I had so many fears about what it meant to be a gay man. And, you know, they're, they're not completely gone. Um, what, what it meant to be okay about being gay, what, what was not okay, how to be gay, um, how to accept myself, how to, how to accept others who were different from me. And, you know, the, the character that I play also goes through some of that. Um, I, I think he, um, he has a hard time, uh, you know, ex just accepting the fact that he is gay. So when he sees people a little too left of center, um, it makes him bristle and it makes him think, oh, oh don't do that. In fact, my, my character says to Robin's character, watch it, don't act like that. And then later in the play, when, when he sees how, how respectful Emery is of himself, I think he gains a lot of admiration and he actually grows during the course of this evening. I wish I could have grown as quickly as Hank did. Uh, Robin, for you, you know, we were just, you know, Tuck was just talking about your character. I think with your character there, it brings up a lot of questions. There's even, you know, levels of comfortability within our own LGBTQ community. Like, you know, you said that, you know, um, Hank is not necessarily so comfortable with your character. What did that experience, you know, obviously playing him on stage and also now in this film, you know, kind of teach you about that whole experience? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is like this weird thing happens within any sort of group of, of marginalized people, <clears throat> excuse me, in that our desire to be a part of, of like macro America and our desire to assimilate will often cause us to police our own people, where we now hold our own people to a higher standard than we would hold anyone else, which is just like, even more screwed up because we are people who we have inherited certain traumas and we're looking toward, towards our own communities to help us work through that trauma, but then we participate in that trauma. And it only affirms why, you know, if you can't love yourself, you can't love nobody else, right? It goes back to Rue. But it, also <laughs> goes back to, it also goes back to us clocking what we do to ourselves and not joining the oppressive enemy, but instead choosing to, to uplift one another. I love that. Matt, what does it mean for you as a gay man to be a part of keeping the story and the legacy of Boys in the Band alive? Well, first of all, I wanna buy Robin's book when it comes out. <laughs> Get that seed now. I will be there at the signing, asking questions, standing in line. Um, look, I'm so grateful to Mark Crowley and, and this original cast who, who, who stood up and told this story at a time when it was unprecedented to do so and so courageous to do so. And the fact that 50 years later, we're doing it with an openly gay cast, all of whom have thriving careers because of the courage of those who came before us. Um, so for me, holistically, this is a great experience. And the fact that it's a story that's about the cost of oppression and what that does to people who are marginalized and treated as less than, we don't have to look too far around these days to see what the cost of that is and how much it needs to change. Well, thank you to the three of you for telling this story again and for all that you do to you know, fight for acceptance for the LGBTQ community. Thanks again. Thank you, thank you Anthony. Thank you, Anthony.